Howdy, my name is Scott. Welcome to my channel, Go Small, Live Large. Today we visit St. Louis, Missouri. It's an amazing place. I'm gonna show you things you may not have ever seen in St. Louis. Since February 2019, I've been living full-time in my van. That's what we do here on Go Small, Live Large. We talk about places, people, vans, van life. If you're into that kind of content, you don't wanna miss a minute of this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single video. Been running Route 66 for a few weeks now and we pause to show you some really cool stuff in St. Louis, such as the City Museum. And when you think about museum, you're not gonna think museum the same way after I show you this museum. And it'll give you a really hot park parking tip as well. And then I show you the Hilton Hotel that they turned an antique train station into this amazing hotel and you will not believe what happens at the top of every hour on the ceiling. And I introduce you to Soulard, a very historic neighborhood in St. Louis. Street Camp, give you a tip there. And I stay at a Harvest House, we'll give you a tip there. In the Soulard neighborhood is a really historic cathedral, show you the inside of that. That's pretty cool. And the last thing we end up with is a tour at Anheuser-Busch where they make Budweiser. <laughs> Big video, don't miss a minute of it, let's go. So you know what that is, right? Yeah, that's the Gateway Arch in downtown St. Louis. And while it's not technically on Route 66 that I'm aware of, it's a pretty cool deal. Uh, we are not gonna show you that whole experience. However, I would highly recommend this. When you come to St. Louis, do the arch. It's Outside of St. Louis, on Route 66, is Port Labatee Brewery, a harvest host site. Great beer, great staff, great fun. Volta powered air conditioner overnight. So thank you, Volta. Thank you, Harvest Hosts. And Point Labadee Brewery. This too is not on Route 66, but if you're coming through St. Louis, you really got to go to the City Museum. This place is incredible. It used to be an old shoe factory, and now it's this super cool multi-floor collection of eccentric art stuff that is over the top cool. Um, you can easily spend an entire day here um, wandering through the various floors, exhibits, walking through the artwork actually, and it's just really the most amazing thing. Many restaurants inside. Here's the deal on the parking situation by City Museum in St. Louis. Let me show you. The museum is literally in this building. Uh, lots of uh, parking streetwise over here. This along here is all bus parking. These, uh, this lot over here is a $5. It is no shade, it's pay by app. This one here with the pink, it kind of promotes itself as city museum, you know, sponsored-ish. $10, no shade. This one is $15. And why we par paid to pay, and why we chose to pay the extra money here is number one, I can get the van in the door. Uh, number two, it's in the shade, super, super important. That was my number one concern. Secondary concern is security as I have my bike hanging off the back of the van. We parked right here. See the uh, little uh, situation up here? Be very careful, ladies and gentlemen, seriously on clearance. We parked right here where the uh, fire extinguisher is. Perfect spot, last car. So to buy tickets, our recommendation is buy online, then you skip the big general mission. Get your wristbands, and then you walk right past the uh, missing person. And then we explore. Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done <laughs> How was it? Are you getting a little nervous? I'm a little nervous and the six year olds were screaming right up there. What are your problems? I know. Look at our sweating. And there's a Ferris wheel up there too. Uh oh, you gonna take that? I don't know. I looked at it. <laughs>
biggest player in the league. Such a crazy place. Hot dogs and beer, including the City Pilsner. City Pilsner. City Museum Pilsner. You ready? Tennessee City Hot Dog. Tennessee City Museum Hot Dog. <laughs> I'm not sure which Kyle's more excited about. <laughs> How about the lamp made of records? So cool, oh my god, so scary. Uh, the line for the 10 story, that was five, it was about 20 minutes long. Hot, sweaty, open, staircases. Not interested. That was enough for me. You gotta come to St. Louis, gotta do the City Museum. This is just an exceptional example of craziness gone wild and you build it and they will come. Old Shoe Factory, International Shoe Factory, turned into a museum by some eccentric folks. Uh, so much fun, it's just the most amazing day. And you just really gotta do this, uh, I'm serious. It's one of the reasons we RV, is to go see crazy eccentric stuff like this. One more thing to show you today. Ever seen a finer set of entry points for the restrooms? Wait until you see this place. This is the Union Pacific Station, now converted into a Hilton hotel. This is the lobby of the train station. Really cold air conditioning, which is great in the summer. Power, good Wi Fi. It's 2 30 in the afternoon, absolutely not a soul in sight. The bar opens at 4 30. But the preservation of this building is absolutely stunning. Look at the lights. Zoom in for you. Hanging lights. The light is holding flames. I was a little curious as most train stations had a huge railway coming into the building. What they would have done with this big glass dome and what they've actually done is build the hotel rooms under the glass dome so this is all where all the trains would have run these are the kind of places i like to find and then work in cost me uh seven bucks for two starbucks coffees iced coffees wi-fi electricity heat or cool depending on the time of year and a quiet place to focus to me this is a workspace but what a grand uh, I'm, not, I'm not kidding what a grand workspace so if you have projects to do and you're RVing this is the kind of thing we like to seek out
after a couple hours of working with really cold AC, some good Wi-Fi, and some amazing architecture. Kyle, what do you think of the uh, Union Station light show? Well, that too. I know. Light show, right? I know. Huh? Light show, actually. It's so cool. Recommend this for uh, travelers? Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. So let me introduce you to the Soulard neighborhood in St. Louis. It's a Victorian era neighborhood, one of the oldest neighborhoods in St. Louis. Lots of grand Victorian architecture, well known for its bars, restaurants, and some shops, but mostly a residential neighborhood. It's home to Anheuser-Busch, which is interesting, just outside the residential area. Uh, we street camped and had a great time. If you want to get dial in for navigation, dial in 1860 Saloon. It's at the heart of the neighborhood. and we street camp just um, across the street from it was pretty awesome. Uh, those resources are all down below. I hate alcohol, but, oh. Good morning, beautiful people on Instagram. St. Louis street camping. You can just see the arch behind the chimney there. We're in the Soulard neighborhood. Highly recommend this. Great people, great architecture, safe, quiet, uh, like Victorian era architecture everywhere. Really amazing bars. 1860s was the one we hung out the most. Molly's was fun and just beautiful thing everywhere. Street camping. St. Louis, Missouri, Soulard neighborhood. 1860s is the destination bar to navigate to. Awesome pizza, live music. Good morning, Instagram. And with air conditioning overnight, not having a full energy pack, we got a little red on the voltage gauge, state of charge. A little driving around, that'll perk that right back up. Awesome street camping. One van, bed one, bed two. Dude one, dude two. Good morning, beautiful people. And thank you, Volta, for letting us have air conditioning on the street while camping overnight. This will charge up in a matter of moments. So if you like that, you're gonna love St. Francis de Sales, de Sales? I'm not sure I could say that. Cathedral, massive cathedral. Uh, there was a burgeoning German community in St. Louis in the 1800s middle of, and hence Anheuser-Busch being in the neighborhood, being German immigrants, um, they built this amazing cathedral. The cornerstone was laid in 1867, but with the decline, the rise and then the decline of St. Louis, in 1967, they celebrated their 100th anniversary, but the cathedral was in pretty bad shape. Bounced back, and now it's a thriving community and a stunning building. Enjoy. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So with that, we say bye-bye to Kyle as he flies back to Florida and I continue on Route 66. Again, don't miss a single video, I'm taking you to really cool places, meeting some cool people, talking all about vans, and continuing on Route 66. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed making it for you. We had so much fun. We being me and Kyle, my partner, um, he flies in every now and again to, to, to join me. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumb up. Sure, appreciate that. Helps me know, and YouTube shares it out more readily. Comment below, have you been to these places? Would you like to go to these places? And subscribe to the channel. If you're into vans, van tours, cool places, cool people, you don't want to miss a single video. Putting out lots of content for you to help you be a better RVer. 
whether you're no-time, part-time, or full-time like me. Until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on. actually made that day. So day fresh beer, who knows when this is made, but it tastes pretty good after a brewery tour. And Budweiser Empire started right here in St. Louis, Missouri back in the 1850s, if I got it right. Um, highly recommend uh, this tour. Um, it's a timed ticket event, so you need to buy uh, your ticket online. Pretty reasonable, 15 bucks. Uh, again, it comes with two beers, which is pretty awesome. And um, most surprise ending is that Stella Artois, the Belgian beer, is made right here. The only place outside of Belgium where Stella is made to keep up with demand um, is actually made right here in St. Louis, Missouri.